Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Won Bin Lee. Won Bin Lee, hopefully I'm saying his name right, is based in Seoul, Seoul South Korea. And I remember seeing his artwork first on Instagram, and uh, he does have a varied portfolio set. However, I am going to focus more on his practice paintings or drawings just because that's the bulk of his portfolio. And that's actually what got me into his work, his practice drawings or paintings. And it's kind of it's kind of like the artist we checked out um, previously, Daniel Clark. He does or Daniel does focus a lot on um, fashion related models. Um, Lots of fabric in his work and some anatomy, some muscles here and there. Um, for one Bin Lee, he does focus a lot his studies or practice sessions on women, babes, um, a lot of athletes here and there, and a very, very um, cultured content. <laughs> and uh, that's, the, that's the type of content that I'm actually going to be focusing on just because it's my thing. And again, it's the bulk of his portfolio. So if you move on. Now this one is more of an experimental art piece. This is not the main bulk of his portfolio, but you'll see a lot of his skill sets from his practice sessions um, here in his more experimental, I think, personal work. And you'll see it more in the face, the way he renders the face. He does have a smooth way of rendering. He's similar to the... To the artist we reviewed recently as well, Jin Wu Song, I believe his name is, and they have a simple way of rendering. Not not a lot, not a lot of shit. They don't have a lot of textures in their work. They're just straight to the point and very smooth. Um, reminds me a bit of now. One Bin Lee does go further, I think, where he starts to have the Sakimi Chan essence in some uh, parts. Uh, well, at least for this piece and this piece, where it's super highly rendered, where it's hard to see the actual um, brushstrokes. Now, he does focus more on babes on, well, a lot of his anatomy studies are just women. So not a lot of muscles. I mean, some muscles here and there, but they're not men. So you can't really see the, the best in that regard. Most of them are obviously going to be smooth. Um, what I do like about his work is the, the lighting. It's so realistic. And you can see a lot of gradients in his work where it's not... Uh, most of his paintings don't look flat. He can go for the flat look. He can uh, pretty much do any kind of style. Um, what I am going to focus on or what I, what I have noticed in his work is that he tends to go for thin um, lines. And he likes to keep the the edges or shapes somewhat sharp. Uh, he does have a similar gestural aesthetic to say my input woe. Um, the the only difference is my input woe. Hopefully, I'm saying his name right. He the line work is the same, but my input woe likes to exaggerate the forms even more. Like he likes uh, thick, rather thick women. So there's way more curves in my input my input woes uh, work. Uh, what's common between my input woe and one Bin Lee is the line work. They're pretty thin and they do have a sharpness to it. The one Bin Lee is obviously going to be way more sharper and you'll see it in most of his uh, pieces. Now here we have, it's a highly rendered um, image and it's pretty interesting. Sometimes he does show the line work. So he's not going to go for a full render where he essentially paints over the sketch. He kind of reminds me a bit of, what's his name, Evan Lee. Although Evan Lee, he likes the look of showing the, the sketch lines, but what's interesting about Evan Lee is that he likes to add the sketch lines after. They're more of an aesthetic. And uh, for one Bin Lee, he, the line sketch or the line art is the was done beforehand, and he just likes to keep it for stylistic purposes, I guess. But what's cool again is the way he renders his bodies, the skin. It's so smooth and natural. 
and it does feel rather 3D, which I'm very, very interested in. Um, the hair is somewhat simplified or not in the same style, I think, compared to the body. It's more almost like an editorial kind of illustration where you can see more of the brush strokes. For the body, lots of soft brushes. I think it helps if you layer uh, these sorts of things. Obviously, so you can have more control with the, the lighting. And there's so many light sources in his work. And I think that's what makes his work way more realistic and interesting. So again, more babes. Now, I actually thought these were 3D models. But I think he just painted... I'm, I'm guessing he just painted over these. Or he just... Or this is more of just a plain 2D painting. Now, obviously, the leaves and the background elements are just... They're more like gouache paintings. They're just plain and there, but damn. Uh, no. <laughs> um, oh, he's obviously a very cultured person, which I do like. But I want to emphasize, if you zoom out, look at the pointiness of the, the fingers and the elbows and the shoulders. They have that... It's kind of similar to J. Scott Campbell. Campbell? Campbell? He's a comic artist and he does have the same or a similar kind of style where they're kind of pointy whenever he draws his women and men they do have a pointiness to them and somewhat of a petiteness even if he's drawing a guy with muscles they have that kind of thin rather thin mm, tight look and Wan Bin Lee is kind of the same but what's impressive is I think I've seen it in his art station comments is the the rendering style it's super fine and high quality and sometimes it's hard to tell if it's um like a photo or a 3d model just because of the way it's highly done look at the clavicles damn moving on so here he does have a thing for furries <laughs> um and I love the way he was able to paint the anime face because it's kind of hard. I've mentioned this a couple of times. It's, it is hard to uh, make the anime-esque face somewhat 3D, but he was able to achieve it in this way. And it works somehow. Now, obviously, he can't go full over overboard with the, the rendering, but it's enough to make it somewhat semi-realistic. And again, the lighting of his body, his faces, his figures, lots of soft gradients or soft types of shading. It really makes the face and body look rather smooth. Now, he does get a bit more basic, rather. Or basic-ish. Or you can see more of the brush strokes with the hair. It makes sense. It's not meant to be that smooth. Although, I feel like he could have... Uh, maybe this is more of a stylistic choice. It is fur. I guess. She's kind of like a fox wolf. Again, very, very long fingers. Very, very sharp edges. And he does have a thing for fabrics. He's not afraid to tackle the these, these sorts of forms. Um, and I'm not sure how long these would take. Or these studies. Because he has a lot of these. So here we have more furry girls. Um, we have a bunny girl. And look at the eyes, they're very anime-ish. If you've seen any kind of anime show, they tend to exaggerate the, the amount of colors in the eyes. And it does add a bit of character. Um, and again, look at the, the proportions of the face, it is anime-esque. Um, it does have that Korean element to it. If you've seen any um, typical Korean model girl, they do have s the same features. Um, even the way Korean artists draw their women, they have the same kind of look. Because <laughs> they do look somewhat the same, right? That's not racist or anything. They, they have the same aesthetic. So here we have, oh, again, you can see some of that line work showing, but it's rather thin. He does like to show the initial or the, the more refined line sketch where he paints. I think he paints under it, I'm guessing. Um, and it has a nice mixed media-ish look. But again, what really brings out the painting is the way the bodies, I mean, especially this one, the amount of 
um, shading or value range, the very soft gradation, it's realistic. It's almost like a 3D model. Very, very impressive. And it's not afraid to show the sharpness in some of the edges. He did spend more time, I think, with this. Uh, it's some kind of cat, I think. Again, the eyes are colored, the nose, you can't even see the nostrils, they're quite simplified, but it works for the style. And he didn't even he didn't even go further with the, the ears. He spent more time with the hair compared to the ears, but you know, it's more of a study, so it doesn't really matter. Um this is incredible content, so I do recommend you <laughs> check out his art station portfolio. Again, lots of athletic fashion babes in his, but uh, the way he does the folds and the skin, I think that's the most noticeable thing in his portfolio studies or practice sessions. That's the thing he likes to uh, draw the most, I guess. I, I even remember seeing one of the comments in his pieces here to um, like the artist or the commenter was referencing some kind of artist or perhaps. And the point was to study what you like, to draw and paint what you like. And there's always this, uh, not stigma, but there's this push to study certain things in art, but you don't always have to uh, study what other people study. Just find your interests, find what matters to you, find what makes you um, come alive. <laughs> You shouldn't be shamed for that. I mean, maybe a bit of shame is good because it shows you the importance of your work. But <laughs> the point is, study what you like. And I'm glad seeing this um, dedication when it comes to practice sessions in uh, a lot of artists. And one of them is obviously Wan Bin Lee. Look at the, the softness of this like, like the shading, it's not flat. It's like a 3D approach. The eyes again are very, very um, somewhat watery. The nose is simplified as well. And yes, I think it helps if you layer everything because it's hard to keep painting over these sorts of... Uh, especially when it involves soft um, shading. It helps if you organize your coloring phase or rendering phase. So here we have even more um, athletes. He does love doing athletes. Wow, look at those legs, those calves, those feet. Uh, no. <laughs> again, very soft, but he was able to achieve this very, very natural look. But again, in his studies, the way he paints, not a lot of texture. He's not that kind of person. Um, I've seen some here and there, but it's it's so rare. It hardly ever happens. I guess it makes sense. It's it. A lot of it is based obviously on the skin. So he's painting usually skin, so it's going to be soft anyway. And the fabrics are not that apparent always, and they tend to be smooth. And he doesn't do a lot of fur sometimes here and there, but he likes to keep it simple, I guess. Ah, damn. Again, a bit of exaggeration, just a bit, with the sharpness of the the silhouette. You can see a lot of sharp edges in his work, sometimes in the ears, the chin, the nose. I do like the way he renders the face. He does exaggerate it, where it's not, it's almost like an, like a cartoon character, but the rendering is more on the realistic side. Amazing shoulders. Wow, her shoulders are bigger than mine. That's not good. I mean, it's good for her. Is this track where they pass on the, um, Damn, this thing I forgot what it's called, but uh, damn. By the way, if you're looking for good anatomy studies, I do recommend track women or one of those jumping women, pole jumping women. They have the best physiques, especially their legs. They're so bulky or ballet girls. They have the best calves. They're so round because of the, the constant uh, flexion. Um, anyway. Moving on. Oh, more furry girls. Here we have a fang. Damn. <laughs> and again with the eyes, very anime-ish. Lots of colors, very, very lively. 
and it does go with the fashion or with her attire it's blue and i do like the pink in her cheeks very very kawaii kawaii um here you can see more of the strokes in her sweater here and there's a slight bit of texture it's almost like a gouache kind of approach um the legs are smooth and he did still keep the this line sketch to kind of contain the legs and even the sweater and the ears as well everything there's a bit of a, a slight there's some slight line work being shown but it's not that apparent he likes to keep it minimal especially when it comes to the the the, the body he wants his shading or his rendering to do most of the work i love the ears and the the fang meow So here we see more of that line work in the hair, um, and the bit throughout the body, nice feet, uh, nice tattoo. He did spend more time, I guess, with the face and with the eyes, obviously, again, with the coloring. He did add some nostrils for the nose, um, but it's not that rendered. It's more flat than rendered for the most part. Um, I think these were done, I actually thought these were done traditionally. I like the pencil sketches, but I think he does have a decent pencil brush. Um, and I'm kind of jealous. Just because I don't have one like this. Because <laughs> it looks so natural. I actually, I, I really did thought or think that it was done with a an actual pencil. It can't be. So I'm guessing this is the way he starts his paintings or his studies. Uh, the line sketch, maybe he does a rough sketch beforehand and then he'll do a cleaner, somewhat cleaner sketch like this one. Because I find it hard that he would be able to sketch like this. Well, maybe. I've seen some artists do it, so I'm not surprised. And then eventually, I'll show one image here where he breaks down his process by images. Um, yes. So again, lots of women. And it's okay to be focused on something that you actually like. So for him, fashion women... And they're usually tall uh, and slender. I'm not sure what this means, but... <laughs> so here, oh, I, I guess he did this within an hour and 30 minutes, this study. So here we have a tall blonde. Um, fashion blonde. So I'm guessing he's just showing the, the colors being used. Or brushwork. Or brushes, hard to say. He did simplify the face a bit. But if you zoom out, you can see that sharpness in his work in the edges. He's kind of pointy in some parts. He's not afraid to be somewhat graphical with his shapes. I, I, but obviously what really makes his work, his work is the... Well, not what makes his work his work. Because um, the sharpness is all throughout his work. But... I think what people can remember him by is the rendering. He's just pretty good. Or he's pretty dedicated to achieving a certain um, result. So a 2021 drawing, again with the smoothness of the legs. Uh, she's kind of thin, not as fit. Athletically, she's more of a pop star kind of person. Not very um, outdoorsy, I'm guessing. Maybe. But again, nice folds in the shorts here. The lighting is pretty good. Some indication of back muscles, 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 muscles. <laughs> and there's hardly any line work here, just a bit here in the legs, but it's so minimal. So here we have a 2021 white cow. So if you zoom in on the face, it's way more rendered and uh, it's hard to see the line work, not much line work being shown. Maybe in terms of the strands of hair, sure. And some eyebrow, um, or shit, some, some lashes, I guess. The nose is rather small, the eyes are quite colorful. If you go further down, <laughs> she's a heavy person um, and it's not a bad thing, by the way. And by the way, this part right here, it's normal to have folds. I don't understand why some women get so insecure when... I mean, people, men have it too. <laughs> it happens when you roll up your skin. 
um, when you bend your body it's going to happen so don't be insecure <laughs> that's some life advice from dave um anyway moving on um he does have a thing for i mean i also have a thing for skirts like these because it reminds me of school um obviously that's what the girls would wear and i'm not sure what this kind of um skirt is called where it folds a lot um it's quite interesting it's it's quite interesting and i feel bad for some people just because when they went to their school um or they didn't have this they didn't have the privilege of wearing uniforms because there's a thing there, there's a bit of cohesion i guess when you wear you know like a consistent uniform with your peers and um but yeah you know it happens Anyway, he does have a thing for folds, which I do like. He likes showing off his supremacy with his drapery, fabric, fold work, rendering style. Mm, again, the skin is pretty well done. Not a lot of texture. Beautiful knees here. So smooth. And he did add this kind of, uh, like, the it's a separation between the light or the area lit or the area that's lit and the area in shadow there's usually this thing and you'll see it in real life where there's a slight blending of both where it's not exactly shadow it's not exactly light and it has a natural realistic look to it or it helps to add that realisticness to the the study painting now the eyes for this uh i'm assuming it's a girl <laughs> they're a bit too big I mean, it's not bad, but, you know, I guess it fits the character more. But look at how intense the rendering is. It's so intense and tight. Um, I'm, re I'm, I'm, I'm inspired a lot by these sorts of things, but to actually do it, I remember hearing this uh, advice from some oil painter, babe, and she mentioned that you can have or you can be a fan of someone's art without wanting to be or without having to actually do that kind of art and that's okay because um, i feel like whenever i see someone's artwork or style i it's like i have to follow them and you don't have to you can like someone's artwork without having to do their style and that's okay so that's just more of a side note there um, so here we have a fashion babe again. She is packing and she's quite tall. So I'm guessing he does focus a lot in Korean. Very, very tall Korean models. <sighs> oh, beautiful stockings or leggings here. Mm, nice knees. Very, very smooth. And he likes to keep the background rather clean as well. Oh, and there's some texture, but I think it's just an implanted thing. Like a... Yeah. So it's not exactly painted, it's more of a filter, or not filter, but a, it's in a blending mode of some kind. Notice the dress here isn't even that rendered, it's like a flat shape with a few marks here and there. So I think this is some kind of kid, I actually thought this uh, jacket, this coat was a photo, but I'm starting to think it's not. Because it, do, it does feel or look real, but I don't think it's a photo. I think he just painted it. Even the jeans. Now for this black uh, hoodie, I think he did leave it just a simple shape or as a simple shape. Even some bits of the hair are just simple. He rendered the parts closer to the eyes and the eyes are kind of droopy, but look at the colors. Very, very... Mm, droopy eyes now i do think this boy is a boy hopefully or not oh th i think this is one of the first uh, pieces i saw of him that kind of hooked me in to his work now this one is a study of a um i'm guessing some kind of crossfit babe natural crossfit because there are especially once you go if you've seen like crossfit models or crossfit athletes sorry um especially the top level types they're a bit too muscular like they're taking something the men too by the way it's not just the women it's it happens i mean i get it you require it's to be the best you do have to take certain things especially if that's your job um 
but and I think that creates some kind of fear in women whenever they work out like they feel like they're going to become that you're not going to become that it's rare for you to be that muscular um, you can even lift more than the average guy but not look like the average guy or not look like a monster you know no worries although you will definitely gain some muscle like this babe right uh, no. <laughs> but again look at the rendering amazing not a lot of texture it doesn't make sense to add texture the hair is well done it's way more rendered than his usual stuff he did add a nostril for the nose so it's semi it's pretty close to realistic he did leave the pointiness of the nose there and he's not afraid to show some of those sharp edges in the elbows and the some segments of the fingers even in, the, in this um water bottle thing nice fold here now this uh, legging is pretty tight or leggings so there's only going to be a couple of folds and he did a good job of them here very very nice not a lot of hue variety he likes to keep it under one family keeps it simple um i think what really makes it or, or or what compensates for the simplicity of his hues or his subject matter is the way it's rendered especially when it comes to the values the lighting the amount of gradients in his work is amazing oh look at the the, the folds here of the muscle squishing damn even the armpit fat it looks natural as hell I, I don't think that's even fat like this part is fat but this one is the it's technically the um the pec the pec muscles and obviously the boobs <laughs> here we have a snobby babe a bit of line work in the legs but very very light and uh i've mentioned this before where some comic artists like to color their line work and they make sure that the color of that line is related to the colors around that line so in this case if the legs are somewhat pink or beige shit um the lines are going to be close to that color now he didn't do it for everything um it's kind of hard to see in this in the actual top or dress and shoes it's pretty obvious here the legs and even in the neck so it's i think it's hard to see just because it's too thin but it's there the rendering of this top is amazing even the way this thing looks see-through it's like a stocking but it's not tight on the arms it's somewhat loose very very amazing and i can tell this one is something it's like a matte sort of texture now that's cool so also the way he's able to represent texture in his work even when there's not I'm guessing he uses simple brushes, but he was able to, if we go back, achieve this sort of a uh, texture look. So that's cool. So here we have another um, schoolgirl. And here we have a masked. Um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I believe this this did have a lot of likes in on Instagram just because I mean come on she's wearing a mask here but this one is just exposed Ugh. have a sense of decency but then again uh, no. <laughs> I don't mind but if you zoom in on his work there's hardly what hardly any texture I'm guessing he uses a simple round brush, who knows, but whatever that brush is, it's super simple. A bit of hue variation in this um, top. I can see a bit of purple indigo, some green, and some cyan. Um, essentially, they're still in one family, so it's not going to vary as much. If ever there's going to be deviating colors, it's going to come from the background. And I'm guessing he bases a lot of his, obviously his studies on some kind of photo. And then he just exaggerates what he needs to um, exaggerate. I love this part right here. This knot. Even the way he did the shadows. Amazing. <laughs> Kawaii. Even the folds of the mask. Kawaii. 
the clavicles are good too. Uh, nice heart here. This is impossible. This can't be real. But then, you know, we can always dream, right? Oh, kawaii! Oh, uh, here we have a headless bunny girl. Um, the rendering here does remind me of Sakimi chan Her work, her rendering, her rendering style. Um... So her head is on a platter, and she's kind of enamored by you. Am I saying it right? Enamored? Or she's kind of into you? Lustful? Um, kind of like a tsunzere. Am I saying it right? Tsunzere? Tsunzere? Like a crazy chick. Um, nice stockings here. It's hard to see the line work. It's very, very minimal. And the rendering pretty much took over the whole thing. You can see it a bit here in the top, like the, the bow tie. And obviously the hair. Now the rendering of the face, it's pretty high quality. The simplification of the nose, the enlargement of the eyes. Very, very Korean-esque or anime-ish slash Korean-esque. And of course, uh, excuse me. <laughs> the bunny ears. Kawaii. So here we have an elf fairy person. And he has a lot of these. Um, now this one does remind me a bit of Yankee. Now the, the rendering style, not really, but because of the way the background was done, uh, Yankee has a lot of pieces where, or paintings where, he does the background this way, this way where there's kind of a dark contrasting element to it, and then he fades it out to a, he fades it out to a white background. And obviously the fashion does have that, it's not necessarily Korean, it's more like Chinese, the gold and red, it has a kind of feel to it. Um, now this one's pretty well rendered all throughout, it's not just the face. The jacket, the dress, the legs. She's wearing stockings or a net? Wow. Uh, <laughs> now this one I'm talking about, even if it's not rendered, it's still I can still see or I can still feel that it's him just because of the way he did his line work. They're long. And they're somewhat sharp in some edges. And that's a pretty common thing, even when he does his other more rendered babes. There's usually that, uh, the thin lines, very, very thin lines, uh, sharp, confident lines, or sharp corners. And it, it does have a graphical look to it. Like if you see the, the silhouette, it's very shapey. It's not very curvy. It's long and sharp. Kawaii. So here we have a study where there's no line work at all. It's just him practicing his rendering skills. And I do specifically like this part of the leg. Wow, the folds are amazing. Oof. And you can build up your portfolio by doing studies. Now I know it's not always going to be useful. It's, it's really only showing your skills in terms of uh, being able to study something or your painting skills, but it won't necessarily show your design skills, so just be careful of that. Um, do it for you, or if you're kind of bored, I, I don't think it's a bad idea to uh, totally remove studies from your portfolio. So here we have an another babe. Um, the nose is pretty pointy. He did add an nostril at least. Uh, the face, again, bigger eyes, smaller chin. Very, very slender, babe. Uh, I can see a bit of line work in this uh, polo shirt. Look at the amount of folds. Damn. Uh, it's still rather sharp, the way he does the line work. You can see it in, in the fingers, in the pants. Wow, I'm, I'm really fascinated by this, by his um, approach. Again, not a lot of texture. Very, very simple. And it makes sense, the amount of complex- <laughs> And it makes sense, the amount of complexity, say, especially when it comes to the folds. Imagine if you had texture included, it's going to look a bit too much. So, there's a nice balance there. Here we have a firewoman, or fireman, fire babe. <laughs> Reminds me of the anime Fire Force. I'm not sure when season three is coming out. Hopefully, there's a season three. Um, I'm still waiting. So, 
So I'm thinking she can control these hoses. And he did add a graphical element to it. You can see with the half tones and with it, with the some parts being somewhat blacker, darker. But the style is still kind of in his realm. Uh, somewhat long, sharp, or long, but you can see a lot of sharp corners. There is a graphical element to it. Same thing for this chick. She's more of a hip hop -y, um, urban type of person. Very, very graphical. You can see the halftone texture there. And again, the, the, the style is still there. Very, very sharp, long, thin lines. So here we have a study. There's no line work here. So here we have a study of this um, swimmer. I think she's about to jump. Uh, another study. He does a lot of these. And again, sharp, pointy, shapey. Now these boobs have to be fake just because her body is so petite, but the boobs, it can't be real. But I'm not complaining. <laughs> and again, the, the ears, that's kind of his thing. Uh, you can't really zoom as much with this photo, but uh, it's hard to see the line work. He did spend more time rendering. The le oh, look at the knees here. Wow, they look so muscular. Maybe she's a cyclist of, of some kind. Or maybe she does MMA. <laughs> I think. Here we have something that's more anime. Uh, line work with a simple shading. All under one family and it's a bit light. Pinkish. Look at the amount of folds. It's not that clean. Um, but you can get the gist of it. So I think it helps if you actually, again, have reference on the side. So I have way more photos here, so I'm going to pass through them because I think we've spent enough time. I think you pretty much get the gist of this guy. So another schoolgirl. Um, he did spend or add a bit of texture with the, the dress. It's kind of jean-like. Jean-like or... There's a word for it. Uh, I forgot. Denim, I think. Yas. Now this this one is more of a Korean look. I'm not sure why Koreans like wearing black. <laughs> In Japan, they're wearing more colorful at least. Like there's a bit more color. There's still that black and white kind of aesthetic, or that minimalistic look. But in Korea, I feel like they're so dark. Like, is everyone wearing black or white? It's either black, white, or maybe gray. Ugh. Anyway. Oh, this is one of my favorite pieces of his um, beautiful anatomy. And you can see the sharpness definitely in the, the edges, in the line work, in the way the shapes were done, the silhouette, even the fingers, the way the face was done, the hair, the wings. It's so even the tail of this demon chick. Wow. And I do like the contrast of it. Oh, look at that butt. Even the, the knees. Well, not the knees, but the back of the knees. <sighs> The calves look amazing. The feet. <laughs> so here we have another study. This time a track. Athlete. Now for this piece, it did add a bit more texture. It does look more like a gouache painting. On some kind of paper or rough paper canvas. Sharp features still. Wow, look at, the, look at the, how he did the, the braiding here. That's pretty cool. That's nice. So here we have a beach volleyball chick, I guess. Wow. She's thick though. Look at, look at the first short in here. Um, so here you can see more of his shape design language or his shape simplification. You can see it in the way the line work was done initially. Now for this piece, it does have a bit more texture in the paint. You can see some breaking parts here and there where the paint kind of breaks off. And it works, and even if he changes his brushes, just because of the way he does his shapes, his lines, and, you know, like, certain aesthetic elements, like the, the sharpness of some corners, you'll know, or you'll kind of get when it's his, or you'll know when it's his um, work. Now, this one is so, it's uh, pretty highly rendered, even the back. Uh, no. <laughs> Now 
Now this one is a tennis chick. He did add a lens correction in the end. It's that kind of glitch effect. She's quite ripped. Amazing. Ugh, tennis. Again, we'll sift through. It's essentially the same. This one's more of a study of a statue. Um, oh, here you can actually see his line work sketches. He doesn't have a lot of these in his portfolio. Maybe in his Instagram, I'm not sure, but I think he does have an Instagram. By the way, I'll link all of the links in the description below. In this stage, you can see the sharpness in his line work, in the dress, in the legs, in the hat. Here we have a pole or a jumper of some kind. Ugh, look at the muscles. Ugh. Gome in the side. Here we have a volleyball chick, beach volleyball, just jumping. Nice. Again, long, slender, sharp. Now this one doesn't have line work, but you get the point. Now this one reminds me of Ramon, I forgot his name, Ramon something. I did an art review of his work where he does a lot of these exaggerated faces. Anyway. I think, it, did one Bin Lee do that or I'm not sure. I just saw it on his um, art station portfolio. This one does remind me a bit of an artist here on YouTube, Maza something. I think it's a he or she, who knows. Um, but they have the same aesthetic in terms of design, like lots of um, decorative elements. This one's more of a study, painted study. Study as well. When, now this one, the, the anatomy is more westernized, I guess. Oh, this is one of my favorites as well. Um, wow, the proportions are kind of his. Very, very sharp, long features, um, thin lines, very, very soft gradients in his work. Look at the folds in this pocket. Wow! Even the balls really look amazing. Oh, shit. The lighting is what really brings out the best in his um, skill sets. Skill set. <sighs> Me love you long time. Um, <laughs> oh god. Again, pointed or sharp um, fingers. Even in the elbows. Um, some parts of the dress. Shoulders. The face. Uh, he did keep the nose simplified. The eyes again have that nice colored or colorful sense to it. And the face is rather smooth. Pointed chin again. Um, the lighting, the way the body is rendered, that's what really brings out the, uh, uh, the features. I believe you have a breakdown of this painting. So he does line sketch. Uh, I'm guessing this is not the first sketch. It's the more refined one. So maybe he does have a rough sketch in the beginning. And then he'll do this cleaner sketch, he'll do the flats, he'll separate it into two values, or the flats are kind of segmented, and the hair, uh, the bow thingy, uh, the top, and then the, uh, the dress. And then each part is separated, I guess, into two parts, light and shadow, um, or at least the main parts, the, the main area in light and the main area in shadow. And then the, the next phase is doing the in-betweens, I'm guessing. The folds, the the shifts and values here and there, adding a bit of hue variety if need be. And then the final rendering where he goes further into detail and just adds the, uh, the finishing touches. He essentially cleans everything here in this phase and he cleans it up in this phase. Pretty cool. Pretty simple process, but this type of process does take a while. Nice, um cat lady i'm kissing as a cat wishing you the best <laughs> now this trick has a lot of hue variety in it if you look if you focus in on the skin there's so much um it's hard to see but you can see some greens and blues some pinks in the hands some science even although she does look like a zombie in a way she's still hot though uh, <laughs> nice feet. 
again sharp. You can see it especially in the fingers, in the face, in the arms, and the legs. The body is usually covered so it's kind of hard to see, but there is um, a J. Scott Campbell-esque element to it. Now this one I remember, uh, this is actually, um, I remember it being some kind of PNG, because in back when I was doing um, architectural um, illustrations, I would have to find people, uh, PNGs to uh, implant it in my, say, elevations or whatever. And I believe this guy is from a PNG, if I recall. But what's cool is the way he studied the, the pants. Look at the amount of folds here. Amazing. Uh, even in the arm? Wow. I'm jealous. Here we have another babe. You can see a bit of line work. Very, very slight line work. Ooh. But this one is one of my favorites as well. Nice feet. Nice face. Nice hair design. Nice bow. Nice everything. The background kept simple. Makes sense. Here we have another schoolgirl. Um, lots of folds. And I like the eye design. Reminds me of the anime. Um, God. Uh, Railgun something. Um, one of the characters, one of the, the blonde characters had these sorts of eyes. And she was kind of insane in the anime. But she's actually a good person. So... Now the style here is somewhat different, it's a, it's a bit more realistic, even the way the sweater was done. It's a bit textured, slightly more textured than his usual work. Nice folds again. The legs are way more extended, very very sharp, nice ankles but sharp. Long sharp corners, so long lines, long thin lines and sharp corners. Same thing here, the face is super exaggerated, very very cartoony. But long, long thin lines and sharp corners, so that's kind of his thing. And amazing folds, ugh. Now here it's not that rendered, but... The line work here is not even, it's not typical of him. There's way more curves. Um, I would expect more sharper, longer lines. Just based off of his um, studies, or most of his studies. Gomenasai. Now she's packing again. Nice dress here. Long thin lines, sharp corners, sharp corners, big hat. Here we have, um, wow, the, the design of this thing is amazing. Um, so many folds, I mean, this is just too much for me. <laughs> so she has some kind of mechanical leg perhaps, or it's not mechanical, but a... It's some kind of shiny metallic stocking. Um, anyway, oh, she does have a nice scar in the face, and she may have had some kind of eye replacement of some, of some kind. But what's most fascinating here is this part, the amount of folds, I mean, God. So here the style is when we're simplified, uh, simplified, <laughs> simplified, I think I've been talking too much or talking too long. Um. So long lines, long thin lines, sharp corners. Same thing here, not much rendering going on, it's more shapey. But it's still his. This, this one's kind of different. It's almost like it was traced, or it feels like it was traced. But it's not, it's a study. Same thing here, very very graphical in nature, almost like a comic book. Or from a some kind of graphic novel. So that's it for this... Um, Art review, let's find a decent photo. Um, I think this one's a good representation of his process. Um, so yeah, so that's it for this art review of Won Bin Lee. Um, I do recommend you follow him on ArtStation. And yes, he does have an Instagram. So you can follow him there as well. So I'm not sure if he does a lot of sketches, like line sketches. But I still recommend you follow him in any way you can. So hopefully you're inspired from this art review. And um, again, it's a great reminder that you can study what you like and um, eventually you can reap the benefits of 
that focus study and you can apply it to your own project. So keep drawing, keep painting, keep learning, and stay free.